Okay, well I really didn't think I was going to do a video on this one, but I went ahead and I tore it apart and I did the mode select switch and that corrected the eating tape problem, but it still has another issue. So I thought that I would go ahead and do the video. A couple of you guys requested it. So let me go ahead and put a tape in it and show you what it's actually doing. Okay, so here we go. I've got a tape. Go ahead and pop it in. It loads correctly. And it appears to play just fine. This is an SLP tape, an EP, six hour tape. But if I try to do a fast forward search, it really doesn't get that fast. So I go back to play. And when I hit play, it stops and unloads the tape, turns off the power. So power back on, it ejects the tape. Let's put the tape back in it. It loads the tape correctly. So I'm gonna stop it. I'm gonna hit fast forward. Now pay attention to the speed in which it fast forwards. That's all the faster it will go. Normally these things zip along. Okay, so I've shut off the power to the unit. And one thing that I noticed is I can't turn the capstan shaft by hand. It's really bound up. I'm not sure if it has a bad bushing or what. If I try to move this gear down here, it does move the belt down below, but it never turns the actual capstan motor. So I'm wondering, is there something binding this unit? Is the bushing just failed? So I'm going to have to pull this thing all the way back apart, take out the two screws, the plastic one and the machine thread screw, and see if did something get folded over under the capstan motor that's binding it up. I may have to unsolder the ribbon cable and actually remove the transport from the chassis. So let me go ahead and pull it apart and we'll see what it leads to. Okay, so here is the capstan motor, the belt, the pulley, and check this out. I can move this and the capstan motor does not move. It will eventually break away. Maybe. There it moved. Not smooth like it should. It should rotate very smoothly. So I think the next step is to actually remove the capstan motor from the chassis. And that's done by just unsoldering these five pins right here from this ribbon cable, taking out the screws on the bottom of the chassis. We can get the motor completely out and take a look at it and see if we see anything. And no, it's not the brake. The brake is free right here. It's definitely bound up. Oh, and there's two more pins. For the loading motor, I have to unsolder from the bottom. There we go. Now it lifts completely out. Yeah, it is hard to turn. Well, I suppose the next step is to try to pry this little retainer off of here. They're pressed on and there's a groove, so hopefully it'll cooperate and come up. There it comes. Got it off. Well, let's go ahead and see if we can pull the capstan shaft out of the bushing. Oh, look at that. Hmm, maybe it just needs a really good cleaning. Hard to tell, but we'll get some magical solution acetone out and a cotton swab. We'll try to clean off whatever that is. Actually, it looks scored. So just a paper towel with some acetone. Hmm. 
Yeah, it is scored up a little bit. Well, let's go ahead and clean out the bushing and see if that makes any kind of a difference. I may have to try to cannibalize another unit to get a capstan motor or at least a shaft out of it. We'll see how it goes. So I have a cotton swab moistened with acetone and I've removed a lot of the cotton from it. Look at that that came out from the inside of it. What is that? Huh, interesting. So we'll try it one more time. I may not have removed enough of the cotton. Man, it's filthy inside there. Look at that. Well, let's go ahead and put the capstan shaft back in it and see what happens at this point. Much better. Much, much better. Okay, so I have some white lithium grease. And I'm just going to go ahead and run it through here and lube it up really good. Both sides. So, I'll go ahead and snap the retainer back on it. That should be just fine. Well, so far, much better. That's the way it should spin. Do not forget to reattach the loading motor. Also, you may want to prep the ribbon cable from the capstan motor to the main board just to make sure it has evenly spaced pins that will solder back to the pads on the circuit board. So here is another tip when reassembling this unit. So take a piece of electrical tape and just stick it to the back of this unit. Fold it over. That way the pads on the ribbon cable that you have prepared will not be damaged when you stick it up to the board. They are extremely fragile. So because I thought this was just going to be a regular service, a VCR cleaning, a DVD cleaning, a mode select switch cleaning, I didn't show the actual cleaning of the mode select switch. Let's pop the top off. This is what it should look like inside after you've cleaned it and applied the dielectric grease. It should be super shiny, basically spotless, and the wipers should be perfectly clean. They've all been shined up with the stainless steel toothbrush. Kind of hard to see because of the close focus, but anyhow, you can see the tips of them are extremely clean. Plenty of dielectric grease. I don't want air contacting the metal whatsoever. Make sure, here's the spot that I've showed you many times. That is the circle right there. Make sure that this lines up with that circle when you reassemble the unit. Remember, do as I say, not as I do. I almost forgot to solder in the cylinder motor drive. There we go, all ready to go.
So in reassembly of this unit, I wanted to let you know that I did go ahead and replace this capacitor right here with a brand new Nichicon 4700 microfarad capacitor. Okay, all back together. Let's go ahead and pop the tape into it. Now let's fast forward it. Fast forward search, remember last time it shut off. Back to play. Reverse search. Back to play. Stop, let's do an actual fast forward. Stop. Rewind. And will it play again? Yes, it does play. That was the problem. Well, I wasn't totally happy with the way the capstan motor turned out. So I went ahead and pulled a capstan motor out of a scrap unit and replaced it in this unit. So now let's take a listen to it. Fast forward. Rewind. All right, well there it is, up and running. That is a tape that I made actually reassembling this unit. So I had an old 1980s camcorder that I set up and videoed me putting this thing back together. Anyhow, it's up and running. It has a different capstan motor in it right now. It sounds perfect, it works great. That's it, the end of the video. I certainly hope you enjoyed the video on the repair of the Sanyo DVD recorder FWZV475F. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really does help my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me NorCal715videos at gmail.com. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below. I try to read all the comments and respond when I have time. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everybody, thanks for making it to the end of this video. I really do appreciate it. Everyone have a great day. Once again, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.